Hello, this is Mr. Ellis. I would like to discuss today the input mechanisms for JavaScript. Last class, we talked about the output methods with document.write, uh, the use of the document.getElement by ID to put information on the page using the inner HTML of p tags. Those are all output mechanisms. I'd like to discuss today the input mechanisms and methods that are involved in JavaScript. But before I do, I would like to discuss variables. Okay, This first video will be about variables. Variables are storage locations. They're stored in memory where we store uh, the data that we need to hold for the program to use to execute. Okay. The variable types will be discussed, but know that variables are the way that we accept input into the program. Uh, say I prompt a user for his name, and he puts in his name, we have to have a place to store that information. When the program ends, the storage is released. But until the program ends, I have access now to the information that the user has placed in memory. Now let's discuss how we create variables. We use the keyword var to create a variable, okay? And then the name of the variable. There are rules about naming variables. Uh, most importantly, the, the first character must be a you know, alphabetic character, an underscore, or a dollar sign. Okay. Uh, another rule that is is optional is that variables must have meaning. The, here I've said number, uh, and this variable can hold either an integer value or a decimal value, because JavaScript is untyped. It also can hold any other data type that I place in it. But because I've called it a number, we expect it to hold either an integer or a decimal number. In order to place a value into a variable, you use the assignment statement. An assignment statement has a format, the variable name, an assignment character, which is equal, one equal sign. We'll find that that's important here later. And then a value. In this case, I've used an integer value, a number without decimal digits. Okay. The data types in JavaScript are number, string, and boolean. Well, the number, uh, is takes two formats and I'll say decimal but here we see that 25.0 is still 25 so an integer number can be considered a decimal number but here we call it an integer because it has no decimal digits the next variable type I'd like to talk about is string a string is a group of characters enclosed in quotes Okay, this is an example, uh, open quote, Thomas Jefferson, close quote, is the way we define or declare a string. The string that is found here has a space in it. You can place anything you want, any characters you want between the quotes, and it will be rendered as displayed. Okay, again, we use the var as our declaration and the variable name name and we can assign using the following as we see here we have the variable name the equal sign and then the string of characters between quotes followed by a semicolon every javascript statement is followed by a semicolon 
Finally, we like to discuss the third variable type in a data type in JavaScript. The data type is Boolean, and the value that can be held by a Boolean is true or false. These are literals, they're not strings, and when I make an assignment to yes, no, I can use true or false as values for Boolean variables. Here again, we use the var keyword to assign or to create yes, no, followed by a semicolon. And the assignment takes the format variable, assignment character, value, in this case, true. And note, there are no quotes around true, and there will be no quotes around false, okay, because they they are literals, okay, and you don't put quotes around them, or what that does is make yes, no, a string variable. Now let's discuss how we will respond to information that we receive. Okay, how can I use the value that I've stored in memory? Now, the prompt response mechanism is more for the user than the program. Uh, program, we can create data from other programs. We can create data by typing it in as constant values. But if we're interacting with the user, which JavaScript allows, we will use a prompt response mechanism. We will ask the user for some input. We will store in a variable the input that the user has provided, and then we will use it in some way. In this case, a uh, simple use that we're going to do is simply output it to a p tag in our HTML. Then the ID for the p tag, uh, as usual, is p1. Okay. So I'm going to now display the string, the magic number, I should say is number. And what value, I, whatever value I have in number, it will display. Here we see that the magic number, it should say is 25. Let me go back. And save Mr. Ellis is 25. Okay. Now, that value, 25, is an integer. But my number variable can hold integers or decimal numbers. Now, when I change the value of number to a decimal digit, five point a number with decimal digits 5.9 say and I redo this statement it will now say the magic number is 5.9 so I can reuse the variables and overwrite the value in the variable with a new assignment statement and as I reload you will see a new value that is stored in number. And now the output for the string value and variable name is the same. I use a different, I use a p tag, which I've defined in my HTML to output just as we've done before. I'm going to make sure that I've saved here and go to the program here. This is a string value, Thomas Jefferson. Okay. And finally, we like to examine the output for a Boolean value. Uh, as I said before, the value can either be true or false. And I've made the assignment of true. Here we will see the string, the Raiders are a good football team, which I'm praying that they will be. Uh, yes, no. The value in the variable should be true. Let us go out and hope they are. 
I'm going to reload this guy. And there we see the output for our Boolean variable. This has been Mr. Ellis given a brief introduction to variables so we can use them in our prompt response mechanism.